In the AFL, the term dynasty is reserved for teams that have achieved sustained excellence over a period of several years, whilst winning multiple premierships in a short space of time. Teams like Brisbane, Geelong, Hawthorne and Richmond have left an indelible mark on the AFL landscape, dominating the competition and etching their names into the annals of Australian sporting history. Brisbane and Hawthorne won three premierships in a row, Geelong won three in five years and Richmond won three out of four. But what sets these teams apart from other premiership teams? How did they build and sustain their dynasties? In this video, we will explore five key steps that underpin the success of creating an AFL dynasty, with a particular focus on the more contemporary examples in Geelong, Hawthorne and Richmond. The foundation of any successful AFL dynasty is a core group of elite players who form the heartbeat of the team. These players are not only supremely talented, but also possess the leadership qualities and competitive drive necessary to propel their team to greatness. Geelong, Hawthorne and Richmond all understood the importance of building around a nucleus of elite talent, and their success on the field is a testament to the wisdom of this approach. Geelong's dynasty of the late 2000s was built around a core group of players who would go down in AFL history as some of the greatest of all time. From Matthew Scarlett's rock-solid defence to Gary Ablett Jr's mercurial brilliance in the midfield, the Cats boasted a lineup of stars who could turn a game on its head with a single moment of brilliance. Players like Jimmy Bartell, Paul Chapman and Joel Corey provided the backbone of the team, while emerging talents like Joel Selwood ensured that the Cats remained a force to be reckoned with for years to come. Hawthorne too understood the importance of building around elite talent. The Hawks dynasty was anchored by a core group of players who would go down as legends of the game. From Sam Mitchell's masterful midfield play to Lance Franklin's awe-inspiring goal-scoring prowess, Hawthorne boasted a lineup of stars who could match up with the best on any given day. Luke Hodge, Jared Roughhead, Cyril Rioli and Isaac Smith rounded out a formidable lineup that routinely caused headaches for their opponents. Richmond's dynasty of the late 2010s followed a similar blueprint. The Tigers built their success around a core group of players who embodied the spirit and tenacity of the club. From Jack Rewalt's aerial brilliance to Dustin Martin's unrivaled skill in the midfield, Richmond boasted a lineup of stars who could elevate their game when it mattered most. Trent Cotchin, Alex Rance and Shane Edwards provided the leadership and experience necessary to guide the team through the highs and lows of a gruelling AFL season. So we've established step one is forming a core cool group of star players. So what comes next? In addition to building a nucleus of elite talent, successful AFL dynasties are characterised by the ability to innovate tactically and stay ahead of the competition. Geelong, Hawthorne and Richmond all employed unique game styles and strategic approaches that set them apart from their rivals and propelled them to sustained success on the field. Geelong's dynasty was built on a foundation of precision and efficiency. The Cats were renowned for their precise ball movement and ability to control the tempo of the game. They utilised short, sharp passes to maintain possession and frustrate their opponents, dictating the pace and rhythm of matches with ease. Hawthorne, under the guidance of master coach Alistair Clarkson, embraced a more dynamic and fluid style of play. The Hawks were willing to take calculated risks and experiment with different game plans to exploit their opponents' weaknesses. From their trademark cluster defense to their ruthless attack on the counter-attack, Hawthorne's tactical innovations kept their opponents guessing and ensured that they remained one step ahead of the competition. Richmond's dynasty was built on a foundation of relentless pressure and intensity. The Tigers' high-pressure defensive system, which would later just be referred to as Richmond-style pressure, suffocated their opponents and created scoring opportunities from turnovers. From their swarming defence to their rapid ball movement, Richmond's tactical innovations transformed them into a dominant force in the AFL. While tactical innovation is crucial, it is not enough on its own to guarantee long-term success in the AFL. Collingwood's forward press defensive style in 2010, while innovative, did not result in sustained success highlighting the importance of the other factors discussed in this video. One of the key trends of successful AFL dynasties is the ability to find value players with late draft picks. Geelong, Hawthorne and Richmond all excelled in identifying and developing talent from later rounds in the draft, ensuring that their premiership windows remained open for years to come. Richmond's success with late draft picks is perhaps the most remarkable of the three teams. Players like Jaden Short, Dan Butler, Liam Baker and others were all drafted late in their respective drafts but became integral parts of the Tigers' premiership winning teams. Their ability to find talent in unexpected places speaks to the strength of Richmond's scouting and development programs. Hawthorne too found success with late draft picks. Players like Luke Bruce, Paul Puapolo and Taylor Duraya were all drafted late but played crucial roles in the Hawks' three-peat between 2013 and 2015. 
Hey guys, I just want to quickly let you know that this video is brought to you in a paid partnership with BetterHelp. Now, over the last few months, I've opened up quite a lot on the True Footy podcast about some of the mental health struggles that I've had, which is why I'm really pleased to be in the position to be able to connect you guys with a platform like BetterHelp who connects you with a credentialed therapist who is trained to listen and give you helpful, unbiased advice. I do understand that starting something like therapy can be a little bit daunting. You know, some people aren't fully comfortable with the face-to-face interaction side of things, or in some cases, you know, it might be finding the right therapist. But that's the great thing about BetterHelp because they can connect you with a therapist who you can have your consultations with through phone call, video chat, messaging, if that's what you prefer. Now, the way to get started with this process is if you check out the link in the description of this video or in the pinned comment, if you click that, you'll be able to fill out a questionnaire which helps assess your specific needs. And in most cases, you'll be matched with a therapist within 48 hours. If you are matched with someone that isn't quite suitable for you, you are able to switch to another one at no additional cost. So if this sounds like something that you could benefit from, consider BetterHelp. Like I said, there's the link in the description and in the pinned comments, or you can go to betterhelp.com forward slash true footy. Now clicking that link does support the channel, but it also gets you 10% off with your first month at BetterHelp. So you can connect with a therapist and see if it's the right fit for you. Thanks guys, let's get back to the video. Hawthorne's ability to unearth gems from the later rounds of the draft ensured that their list remained competitive even as their stars began to age. Geelong's success with late draft picks was perhaps less pronounced, but no less important. Players like Cameron Ling, Max Rook and James Podsey Adley, again amongst others, were all drafted late but played important roles in the Caps' premiership winning teams of the late 2000s and early 2010s. Geelong's ability to find value players with late draft picks ensured that their list remained deep and competitive throughout their dynasty. So we've covered establishing a core cool group of star players, innovating tactically and extracting the value out of later draft picks. But in addition to drafting and developing talent, successful AFL dynasties are also adept at attracting talent via trades. Geelong, Hawthorne and Richmond all made key acquisitions from other clubs that bolstered their lists and extended their premiership windows. Richmond's signing of Tom Lynch as a free agent is perhaps the most high profile example of this. Lynch, a former Gold Coast captain and star forward, has proven to be a key part of Richmond's recent premiership success, earning all Australian honours in both of his premiership winning seasons. In addition to Lynch, Richmond also added a number of low-cost trade recruits prior to their first premiership, including Dion Prestia, Bashar Hooley, Sean Grigg and Josh Caddy. Hawthorne also made key acquisitions via trade during their dynasty years. Players like Brian Lake and Sean Burgoyne were both traded to Hawthorne and played crucial roles in the team's three-peat of premierships from 2013 to 2015. In addition to Lake and Burgoyne, Hawthorne also added players like James Frawley, Josh Gibson and Jack Gunston from other clubs to consolidate and prolong their premiership chances. Geelong, while less reliant on trading in elite talent, still made strategic moves to become competitive. The acquisitions of Tom Harley, Cam Mooney and Brad Ottens from other clubs helped bolster Geelong's list prior to their premiership years. Additionally, Geelong's decision to remain competitive in the years following their dynasty ultimately helped in recruiting players like Patrick Dangerfield, Jeremy Cameron and Isaac Smith, who would play key roles in their 2022 premiership a decade later. Perhaps the most important factor in building an AFL dynasty is a team's ability to perform well under pressure. Richmond, Geelong and Hawthorne all demonstrated their ability to rise to the occasion and deliver strong performances when it mattered the most, cementing their legacies as some of the greatest teams in AFL history. Richmond's finals record over their dynasty period is a testament to their ability to perform under pressure. With a record of 10-2 in finals matches, the Tigers consistently delivered when it mattered most, overcoming adversity and rising to the occasion on the biggest stage. Geelong too demonstrated their ability to perform well under pressure, winning premierships in 2009 and 2011 despite being the lower ranked team than their opponents. The Cats' mental resilience and composure under pressure were key factors in their success, allowing them to overcome the odds and emerge victorious when it mattered the most. Hawthorne's ability to perform under pressure was perhaps best exemplified by their demolition of Sydney in the 2014 Grand Final. Despite being the best performed team of the season, Sydney was no match for Hawthorne's relentless pressure and clinical execution, highlighting the Hawks' ability to lift when it mattered the most. The notion of performing well under pressure might seem vague and arbitrary, but these three clubs seem to do it better than the rest, and for longer. And what it speaks to is a brilliant team culture. Another interesting element to the dynasties of both Geelong and Hawthorne was that in both cases, both clubs would lose the best player on their list to a rival club, only to go on and win at least one more premiership. 
This achievement is made possible largely thanks to achieving each and every one of these five steps. So, in conclusion, building an AFL dynasty requires a combination of factors, including building a core nucleus of elite talent, tactical innovation, success with late draft picks, attracting talent via trades, and building a resilient and lasting culture that leads to performing well under pressure. Teams like Geelong, Hawthorne and Richmond have demonstrated that sustained success in the AFL is achievable with the right combination of talent, strategy and mentality. By studying the lessons of these dynasties, aspiring AFL teams can hope to emulate their success and etch their names into the annals of Australian sporting history.